just let me know when you start and I'll start this. We are live, everybody. Welcome to the Chromecast Podcast. Coco, Yemi. What's up, Yemi? How are you, dude? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, the AH is there. What's up, dude? Pizza is so good. I agree with you, man. Uh, just for games. Hey, Coco. Hey, chat. Hey, buddy. How are you, man? All right. So we'll start the podcast right now. Uh, thank you, everybody in the chat for being there. Truly appreciate it. Um, there we go. There we go. So what's up, everybody? I'm Chronoside and welcome to episode 10 of Chronocast, a PlayStation podcast. Chronocast is a PlayStation exclusive podcast where I talk with my co-host Yemi the Ferret, aka Yemi, you know him, about all things PlayStation. Yemi, how are you, dude? Well, I'm doing pretty well. How are you, Chrono? I'm doing great. I'm excited about that, man. I, I was thinking about that all week. Um, yeah, I'm excited to do the, the podcast live for the first time, for sure. What yes. about you, man? It is very exciting. Uh, have you played any games this weekend? Um, well, I play, I was playing this uh, little-known game. Uh, you might you probably never heard of it. I mean, it, no one's probably heard of it. It's called um, Black Ops 4. Uh, it's a very un underrated game, you know, uh, no one really knows about it, made by an indie developer named Activision, uh, and uh, it's been uh, a frustrating experience. <laughs> oh yeah? What happened? <laughs> well, I, every match has its ups and downs, one match you'll be doing great, the next five you'll be doing terrible, it depends what team you get on, what how, you're, how you are doing against the, you know, if the other team has like five people who are in a party, you know, things can go really really wrong really fast so um, um do, do you enjoy the game the game is good or i'm uh, on the fence right now i haven't really had gotten an opinion on it my first impressions were pretty good but uh it has, the more i play it the more crappy games i get into where the other team was just dominating and then the blackout mode works well i mean when i played duos it was a lot more fun than playing solo so Definitely would recommend that. And then Zombies is fantastic. It's definitely the best Zombies experience since, like, uh, Black Ops 2. Oh, okay. So I feel like there's not much to the game. Uh, they remove, like, the, the single player. So it feels like an empty experience. Um, there's, like, two modes or something like that. There's multiplayer. There's Black Blackout, they call it. Mm -hmm. and, and there's Zombies. So, yeah, the three. Okay. I, I think with the three maps for zombies, it definitely fills the void of campaign, especially because the one that you're on the Titanic called IX, I think it's called, is pretty much just a story-based one, and it's like the easiest map of all of them. Uh, but a lot of the maps are, are filled with nice secrets and story mode stuff. Not story mode stuff, but story stuff. Secrets. Um, and I think that kind of fills in the blank. Uh, for me personally, uh, and then blackout mode, I mean, like I said, it's not amazing, but uh, you know, it's not too playable. bad. Yeah, on the it's, fence. it's playable on, yeah. the fence. <laughs> on the fence right. right now. So, I played a little bit of uh, Spider Man, uh, just gone a little bit farther into the, the story, and uh, that's yeah, I played uh, Home Sweet Home, the, the horror game. Not sure if the chat already uh, played this one. Like, it was uh, released on Steam last year, and now it's making its console debut with uh, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, uh, Xbox One, and a PSVR 2 uh, support. So uh, it's mm -hmm. an horror game, survival, uh, puzzle elements in it. Uh, it was, I, I shit my pants a couple times, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I recorded the first impressions video. Will drop probably like on Friday or something like that. I'm not sure yet, but great game. It uh, remind me a lot of Outlast actually. So uh, I was excited about this one, man. You heard of that? Yeah, I actually uh, bought it for my uh, my fiance, and she played it a little bit, and she got very spooked while playing it. Yeah, man. It's a it's a really spooky game. Um, usually, I'm not scared in our games. I'm um, Caught me a little, uh, a little bit uh, this game, especially in the beginning. I love the story too. Everything is good about this game. Uh, maybe live stream it uh, someday. I don't know. Yeah. But um, yeah, a really great game. Mastiff gave it to me actually. Yeah, it sounds. It looks like a really cool game. So yeah, it uh, is. I'll, I'll, I'll probably wait on a sale. You know, I'm, I'm that kind of person. But uh, you know, All right. looks cool. Looks cool. What do you say if we jump uh, right into the news? Well, I got—I actually have a little story to tell. Go, go ahead, man. 
Um, so, <laughs> what's up? So today, I I, uh, I went over to my parents' house today. Okay. And uh, my mom's like, "Hey, you want some cake?" I'm like, "Sure." And so she cuts out this cake and she gives it to me. And she's like, "Yeah, I, I read I read a book and it had a recipe in it for cake." I'm like, "What?" So uh, it is a like a vanilla bourbon almond cake. And I hadn't tried any till I like just before at like eight o'clock. I tried a little bit, and whew, you smell it, you get drunk. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of alcohol in this. It was ridiculous. Uh, my it was earlier today. Or? Yeah, it was like just just uh, 30 minutes ago. I tried. You it. got drunk on cake. Oh yeah, I'm so wasted, bro. Oh, <laughs> That's crazy, man. But I'm like, holy shit! I, I like would get a call for like a whole bottle of whiskey. I mean, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, dude. That is funny. So now uh, you're ready to drop into the news, right? Yeah, just a little warning. If uh, if I fall over, that's why. <laughs> oh, I'll continue the podcast alone. No worries, okay. man. No Understand. worries. So Chronocast is recorded each and every week on Wednesdays, which is not true. Uh, actually, we never talked about this before, but I will probably like stream on Wednesdays now. Uh, let's see how the stream goes and how, uh, in terms of views and watch time and stuff like that. So uh, usually I will record this on Wednesdays and drop it on Thursday at 1 Eastern PM, uh, 1 PM Eastern time, but uh, that might change uh, in the future. So the podcast is divided into several segments. Uh, we call uh, we talk about the news, the new releases, topic of the show, trophies. You know how much I love trophies. And mm. question from the listeners. I um, might take the question from the chat uh, for this Ooh. one. And uh, PlayStation memory. So uh, what's going on in the chat? Talking about the chat. Are, are you going to stream some Black Ops 4? I uh, Yemi will. I will not. <laughs> The age, I will not. This is totally not my type of content and totally not my type of game. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I mean, little, little insider, inside sources. Uh, I'm gonna be switching away from, from streaming a little bit, and I think I'm gonna be doing more of a, a video edited series on Black Ops 4. Uh, cool. I'm, hope, I'm hoping to get the first video out uh, by next month, like montage or highlights or some stuff like that. Um, it's, it's all going to have a theme kind of like, um, my old montages where I only used like a Panzer Shrek or something like that. Um, but it's going to be more so a little shorter. It's going to be much shorter. Cause I'm just going to kind of take the sweet parts and, and edit them together. Yeah. I, I, I'm doing that too. Uh, uh, especially with my Super Mario Maker series. I think it's better content. Yeah, I think it helps with the viewer retention because instead of it being kind of like a, a stream where there's a lot of downtime, uh, it'll be more of like, a, hey, uh, these are like pow pow right in the face. You get you get the, the jokes and and the deaths. Pow pow. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Spider-Man does whatever a spider can. That That's Coco Common. Not sure what that means. Game Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Does oh we're gonna get copyright strike if I finish that? No, just stop that, man. <laughs> Again, consoler, Shinobi, uh, do dopamina, uh, ninja, awesome. Welcome to the stream, guys. I hope you enjoyed ninja? the conversation. What's that? Fortnite ninja? No, ninja zero. Ninja zero. <laughs> he, he come from uh, Mendy's Cruise. Mendy's crew. I'm in the cane lane. All right. <laughs> I love rum cake. There you go. Gun consoler is with you on this one. All right. Well, I don't. I didn't love it, but uh, I'll uh, I'll send you a box. How about that? <laughs> that that's gonna cost a lot in shipping, dude. Well, that's true. <laughs> All right. So first news um, of uh, the podcast. Uh, why is Dreams taking so long to release? So Dreams is uh, developed by Media Molecule, which is the developer behind uh, the tri uh, not the trilogy, Little Big Planet one and two, and also um, Tear Away. Oh, there was a third. There was a third little bit. Yeah, it? it was uh, developed by uh, Sumo Sumo something. Oh, it was yeah. a different developer. They, they haven't developed it, the third one. And it shows because it was a broken piece of shit when it was Ooh. released. Totally Ooh. broken game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fire. huge fan. I'm a huge fan of Little Big Planet. And I was so disappointed with the third one. <laughs> Um, so basically, um, Dreams was uh, announced uh, in, on E3 uh, 2015, so it's been like almost four years now, um, more like three years, and um, 
I'm not sure about dreams. Uh, it seems like there's a lot to do in the game. Uh, it doesn't seem like a game, actually. It seems like, like more, uh, they are going with more the, like the formula of Minecraft, like building stuff, uh, logic, sculpting stuff. So um, maybe that's why it's taking so long, but um, the team uh, in the earlier years of dream uh, was really small, so this is what they are seeing right now because they they went full with um, the full team on Tearaway. So uh, I'm I'm interested in seeing more of the game uh, for sure. I'm interested to see where this is going to, but I'm not sure about like the commercial success of the game. So what do you think about Dreams? You're a fan? Yeah, or? I, I mean I was never really a huge fan of like the Tearaway games or the Little Big Planet games, unfortunately. So this one might be a pass for me, but mm -hmm. with the long development cycle it has right now, I mean, it could be something really special. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see because it's like we don't really have much to go on right now. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing. And um, like last year, they tried to turn it around saying it was a, it was not only sculpting, not, not only building. And um, they said there was single player, a little bit like a uh, little big planet, but they never shown any of this. So still hmm. not sure what the game is all about, man. Seems cool, but I'm yeah. a fan of little big planet. So I'm sure Media Molecule can pull out a pretty good game, but uh, there's not much to, to, to talk about with dreams right now. Oh, well, hopefully it doesn't go into development hell and like never release uh, <laughs> like Dead Space or not Dead Space, but a Dead Island two yeah exactly exactly but well it's three years now um since it was announced so um maybe they were working before the the, the official announcement to you so it's maybe more than three years actually yeah it's probably been developed for about five years i would think because after two years usually they have something palatable that they can actually like explain in a conference yeah <laughs> i mean i know when bethesda did their e3 conference they had like just the the jpeg of Skyrim or the new Elder Scrolls game pop up and then the like the JPEG of D Doom Eternal so like they didn't have anything to talk about so but I mean the game when when you actually saw Doom Eternal gameplay it was like whoa okay they've been working on this for a while so I think maybe that's gonna be like the dream where you know they 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 talk about it, they they allude to it for a little bit and then they'll pow they'll get you with that gameplay yeah maybe um like it's a different like uh marketing for sure between the two companies uh but dreams were shown uh in the last e3 everything every uh like little scenes in the background um when they announced the game and stuff like that was all done with uh dreams mechanics and the game actually the the in-game uh, mechanics and uh, building stuff so uh, it's not dead for sure it's not like it's not talked about that's what scares me right now mm, yeah uh, just for game, sorry, need to go uh, to work, buddy. Have a great stream and a great day and night, you guys. No problem, man. Thanks for stopping by, dude. Uh, Fortnite Ninja, Ninja, I uh, found it funny. Uh, Chrono and Yemi, how are you guys? Sinister Gaming TV, welcome to the stream, man. I hope you enjoy the podcast for sure. Well, it, it's a stream and now a podcast, so not sure how I feel about that, though. Like, I, I will probably accept for this one the nice stream in the comment section. <laughs> just for this one. <laughs> just for this one. All right, so uh, the second news of the show is Naughty Dog are currently casting for Secret Project. So uh, they are uh, uh, pretty much like a good portion of the team uh, at Naughty Dog is working on The Last of Us Part Two. That's safe to say, right? Yeah, would, yeah, yep. So um, there might be splitting the teams into two teams, like a big teams and a, like the E team and the B team. Uh, maybe they are working on something like smaller, a little bit from on, on the Uncharted series and the Last of Us series. So what are your uh, prediction and uh, what do you think of this news actually? Um, Hard to say, right? Yeah, I, I have a prediction, but I, I'm going to save it for when we do the topic of the show. Yeah, same year, same yeah. year. Uh, we'll talk about uh, Naughty Dog for uh, PlayStation 5, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, there's not much to say about this news. Um, it said that there's a, like a casting for black African American male in the game that doesn't say anything. Well, we probably t 
it says that uh, it's probably not Uncharted, which we already know that Naughty Dog is not uh, working on the next Uncharted. There will be no next Uncharted, at least from Naughty Dog. They announced that. They already said that. But um, I'm not sure about this one because San, San, San Diego uh, Studio is um, working probably on, on the Uncharted series uh, for the next step in mm-hmm. the series. So um, I'm not sure about this one. I'm really not sure what Naughty Dog is working on, actually. Yeah, yeah. it could be uh, something completely different from what they've been doing, or it could be something rather similar, just in a different setting. Yeah, exactly. Like a story game, story-driven game, but uh, something completely different, actually. In space. In space? That's your uh, prediction? I don't know. I was just throwing it out there. Okay. Could be a space opera. You you miss uh, Mass Effect, right? I missed good Mass Effects. Oh, got him. Andromeda was not not good? Not a good one? No, Andromeda was... Uh, it, I compare it to... Uh, it's that last pickle floating in the pickle jar, and yeah. you go to grab it, and you just can't grab it. Mm-hmm. I understand that. <laughs> it's like I don't the like last pickles, by of, the way, so... It's like the last piece of pineapple on the pizza, and you're not sure if you should eat it or not. So you you're picking example that, that I really ate actually, <laughs> pickles and oh, good, pineapples good. on pizza. That, perfect. That that's not perfect. And, no, because Andromeda is a bad game, so I'm picking oh, bad game. Yeah, oh, I see where you're going with that. Then that's a good analogy. I there like we that. go. I like Turn that. it around. We redeemed ourselves. <laughs> Sidewall <laughs> close. Welcome to the stream, dude. How are you? How are you, buddy? Uh, you're new to the channel too. I never saw your name before, right? PlayStation fan? PlayStation fan, dude? That's awesome. All right, next news. Uh, Guinness World Record awarded to Platinum Trophy Hunter. And of course, it's Akum, um, which have 1,691 Platinum, which is absolutely crazy. My uh, 125 Platinum is like small business to him, right? Yeah, <laughs> this dude has, has been uh, accused too of cheating and stuff like that. So I guess it was not founded. Uh, every big trophy hunter actually has been accused to uh, like using multiple players to play on the same account, um, unlocking trophies with a team and stuff like that. So uh, well, congrats to him, man. Guinness, uh, Guinness record is uh, something different for sure, and. Um, Level 246, uh, that's crazy, man. Ooh, yeah, jeez. That is absolutely <laughs> crazy. And his uh, most difficult platinum is Fight Night Round 4, which is uh, 0.1% of uh, players have that. Um, you remember this game, right? Like the trophy uh, list? No, I can't remember right now. So th- this platinum is so rare because um, like, it was a real championship online. So when you, you, you get the belt, um, someone else could challenge you. And there was a trophy for holding the belt for like one day or something like that. And um, you, you needed to challenge the real belt holder, if that makes sense. So mm-hmm. you, you could sit on the belt forever and not let any other players unlock the, the platinum trophy, basically. Wow. So that's crazy. Yeah. So the, yeah. they they paid the players to uh challenge them and stuff like that. So this game was a big mess actually. Big yeah, it sounds mess. Sounds like it. <laughs> well, yeah. Discord is acting up. No. No. Can you hear me now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you want okay. to switch to uh, like private message or? Uh, I tested it yesterday with someone and it wasn't working any better. So. Okay, no problem. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Um, yeah, I, I was gonna say uh, Xbox. I think Guinness gave out uh, the world record for achievements too mm-hmm. uh, for Xbox, which uh, was like insane. Like these people, they get sponsored and stuff like that. Like that's that's like a, a job. You yeah, know? exactly. That's crazy, but it's cool. It's cool, anyways. Yeah, I guess. I guess it's cool. I guess it's cool. Might be a full-time, full-time job, too. I don't know. Keeping uh, that record. <laughs> uh, Medieval celebrates its 20th anniversary today. Um, I tweeted about that. Got a lot of likes and stuff like that. So 
a lot of fans of Medieval, uh, it's been a while, uh, it's been like 15 years, something like that, they released uh, Medieval 1 uh, 20 years ago, uh, Medieval 2 like 2 years after the first one, and they released like um, a, a PSP version which uh, was like a reimagining of the first one, more than a third like installment in the, in the series. Um, so they announced, uh, someone pointed that to me on Twitter and they announced the, the remaster version on PS4, but nowhere to be seen now. Uh, it's been a while. Mm. Are you a fan yeah. of the series? I was so scared of this game when I was younger. Oh yeah. <laughs> it was a spooky game, especially that opening animation and all the, all the stuff happening. Oh man. <laughs> but so it's you're, fun. You're 26, it's... right? Uh, 25. 25, so you were five years when it was released. Okay, I, I can understand that for sure. I can understand that. Yep, uh, I miss Medieval actually, but I'm not sure if there's a place for um, games like that anymore. Like, uh, maybe, maybe, like a game like uh, Insomniac did with Ratchet & Clank, the, the remastered of Ratchet & Clank. Maybe something like that, like semi-open world, like scary settings with beautiful graphics. That that might be working, actually. I think they already announced they've been working on the remaster of the first game. I think it was... Uh, a PSX, at, uh, right? Yeah, oh, well, I think it was E3 last this year. Oh, they just that, had the, that might be it. Uh, it says uh, had... announced a remaster at PlayStation Experience last year. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was close. I was yeah pretty close like six months six months looks. <laughs> well yeah I, I would def I'm definitely gonna pick that up because uh, I have very I have fond memories of this spooky spooky game. So would you like like uh, a treatment like Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy but with medieval or like a reimagining of the the old series altogether? No I, I I'd go with just a more of a us a remaster than a reboot you know. Um, I, I could, the, tr the crash and the Spyro, you know, treatment would be perfect for this game. Yeah, I think so too, for sure. Um, yeah, totally, man. All right. The, the, the chat is really quiet, but I, I was wondering because, um, on YouTube, when you're not tagged into a, a specific game, like we are doing a, a podcast and not playing a specific game, uh, you're not like referenced in YouTube, in gaming YouTube. So that makes sense that there's not a lot of people actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, this one is bad. <laughs> this one is really bad. So PS4 messages designed to break your console reported by users. So I, I got some message like that. Like um, you, you got some message like that or on your PS4? No, I never, I never got the message, but I did uh, change my privacy settings now. Yeah, same thing here. Um, I changed my privacy settings and I, I got a lot of like message from someone that I didn't know, uh, so I didn't open them, of course, but uh, yeah, you, you might need to change your privacy uh, settings for sure, because um, basically you open the message and that was it. You, you break your, 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 your PS4 uh, right away and crashes the system. And even like some users are claiming that deleting said a message to the PlayStation mobile app fixes the issue. So there might be like uh, uh, fixes but uh, I think it's already um, fixed. Uh, Sony is working on it and the, the issue of firmware update, I didn't do that though, but I'll do that right after the stream for sure. But you might need to like uh, update your, your PS4 like ASAP for sure. Yeah, I, I did the update today. Uh, it took like five minutes. But it, yeah, yeah that, it, it's, it's scary. It's like, because you never know anymore, you know? It's like I've gotten messages from those bot accounts that... Uh, that and I've deleted those before, but never something of this caliber has happened really in the past of PlayStation 4. And you wonder what they get out of it, you know? Like, is it just like the gotcha? I, I don't know. I don't understand that. Well, they're like the security system is not good, man. <laughs> like, nobody ever thought that like sending a special message would uh, break your system. That's crazy, man. That's like a huge oversight, actually. Yeah, I never would have thought that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, me neither. But only like sending a message will break your your system. That's absolutely crazy to me. That is insane, man. Um, it's a huge like um, it's a it's a huge oversight on Sony's um, end for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 
All right, so the next news, uh, Sony is hiring for next generation marketing campaign. So we'll talk about this more. Um, uh, it's probably regarding the PlayStation 5, but if there's a marketing campaign, like we said before the podcast started, if there's a marketing campaign, it, it, it means that the console is basically like on its way to, to market, right? Yeah, pretty much. So um, what is your prediction regarding the, um, the release date of the PS5? I think, uh, like I think I said this last time, I think it's going to be 20, let's see, 2019, they're going to show it off at E3, and then either, yeah, I think it's going to be like 2020, they're going to they're gonna release the console. I think, I think that's a good prediction. So like something like October or November or something like that? I, yeah, probably like a October or November, because that's close to the Christmas season. Yeah, that might be a good guess, actually. Um, I think, like, um, Play PlayStation 4 is already in its fifth years, right? Mm. Yeah, Which... uh, it came out 2014, so it's almost getting to the fifth year, yeah. So, like, historically, um, PlayStation console, like, last for five years or so, like, I think uh, PlayStation 4 is the only... Uh, PlayStation 2 is the only exception to that rule, because... Um, it lasted like something like six or six or seven years, but um, yeah, that might be a good guess. 2020 with the PS4 Pro that has been released to uh, in between, that might be like uh, extending the cycle for one or two years. So 2020 is actually a pretty good guess. I like that. Yeah, I uh, you know Sony likes money and they wanna they wanna throw their console out there as soon as they can to beat Xbox. I mean they can't beat the Switch obviously because they've already released but uh yeah they're they're gonna try and beat xbox and xbox is gonna hurry up behind them again and they're gonna release a console that's halfway broken and then they'll fix it with the next generation <laughs> yeah, or the half sure. generation <laughs> and the, the the article the the last <clears throat> sentence is could we learn about next playstation as early as the beginning of uh, 2019 i think they they will reserve that for e3 actually yeah it's either gonna be e3 or, or playstation uh the playstation expo yeah, uh, but they cancel. Yeah, they cancel their PSX for this year. Maybe that's why, though. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why they yeah. want to. They, they want to um, talk about PlayStation Four Five um, soon. I guess that might be it. Actually, I'm excited about that. No Man's Sky, No Man no. Sky VR support. So, oh, boy. No Man's Sky was a mess, right? Not sure if you yeah. bought it. At release date? Oh, yeah, I bought it release day uh, digital, so I couldn't even return it. Oh, it was a great, it was a great purchase. Uh, five, five out of five. So no, you just... didn't like it, right? No, it, it was just really boring, and it just it they promised so many <laughs> things that just didn't happen. And then if if you go back in the news, uh, the collector's edition of the game, they had to open the boxes and put a sticker over where it said it was online. Yeah, I remember um, that. Yeah. Or two to six players or whatever. And now they finally updated the game, got it up to where it's pretty close to what they were promising, but I'm not going to go back to it. As as many people who claim that it's 100% better now, it doesn't matter for me cuz I already I'm already burned by that first that first sale. It was just not good. <laughs> yeah. I saw Master Gaming um uh, playing it like several a couple of streams at least like at least 10 streams and i still thought the game was pretty boring actually um i thought there was not much going on um the graphics are good i guess but um it was just a matter of like the online was a huge portion of this game uh it was like maybe the reason why people uh was exciting about this game and now um yeah, but I'm not even sure if No Man's Sky uh, Next, I think it's called, I have online component to it. <clears throat> That'd be, uh, well, you know, since it is VR, you know, it might not have a multiplayer component. Yeah, um, that's true. That's true. But I mean, there's games out there for the Oculus and the Vive that have, so I don't see, and actually there's PlayStation games that have online support, so I don't, yeah. I don't see why they couldn't. I think that the scope of this game is just, since you have so many worlds and stuff like that, I think it'd be well, I don't, I don't know. I shouldn't say that because it, it, it uh, never <laughs> it's mind. confusing, right? Know. Yeah, it's it's like they could do it. They could make it multiplayer in VR, but with the track record this company has, they're not going to do it. 
they're they're gonna take the easy way out and people are gonna google and ah and ooh and drool all over it and then it's gonna go away again because it's not a very popular game i mean even even with all the updates uh you know? Yep. Um, they promised way too much things with this game and they got burned, man. They got burned right at the release day of this game, got bad press, and I would have just gave up, actually. I would just <laughs> move on to the next like project. I wouldn't like have tried to, to revive the game. That was a bad that was I, I haven't saw the the sales of the No Man's Sky is next, but I'm pretty sure it's bad, right? I mean <clears throat> I I would actually sort of applaud the developers for sticking with the game after so much negativity hit it. Yeah. And they're trying to fix it. I mean, that's more than what any other developer really would do in the same situation. I mean, we saw Mass Effect Andromeda. We talked about it in a few podcasts ago for our Dead series that Mass Effect Andromeda literally like three months later, because it was getting such bad press, they stopped working on it. They 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 stopped the developers from putting out updates and 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 all the DLC was scrapped for the game and the, the sequel was scrapped. And uh, they actually in, in you know the, the developers for this game, they actually stuck with it and I commend them for that because it's very hard to see all that negativity and then keep working on this project they've obviously been working on for a long time yeah they obviously were rushed on it they obviously put it out before everything was finished and they got burned and uh, it's, it's nice to see them fix their mistakes i'm uh, a little bit late but uh, i i can i can appreciate what they did yeah oh for sure as a web developer i know what's uh crunching time means <coughs> uh it's not games obviously but we have still have like a uh, release day for the new version and stuff like that so i understand and i appreciate like you said that the, um like the studios took the time to fix the the issues and stuff like that but they should have like just pushed the game uh to a further day, date like dreams like a lot of games and when you release a broken game it's broken forever that that's the general rule of the this type of situation for sure yeah, pretty much. Uh, Ninja, I have to go. I see you, Chrono. Have a great stream. Thank you so much, dude. I appreciate that, man. Uh, Eric, we're talking about VR. What do you think about uh, No Man's Sky? Welcome to the stream, man. Uh, hope everyone is good. We'll be lurking, listening, and editing. No problem, dude. I appreciate that, that, Great man. timing. Great timing. <laughs> great timing. Talking about VR, and the VR president is right there, man right there so this one is interesting actually sega cancel canceled uh full remakes of the shenmue game so the original plan for the shenmue um uh remastered uh was to build a little bit like the crash bandicoot um trilogy from the ground up both shenmue games uh right uh, for for the time for to release shenmue 3 uh, basically, but they decided to do ju just an HD port. Um, so it was like the reason behind that is the final sh financial aspect, probably. But Sega is really cheap with um, they are not treating like with Sonic, uh, with Shenmue, they are not treating the game and the series correctly, in my opinion. They haven't been treating Sonic in, in a good way in years. Yeah. You know, I mean, all the way back to Sonic 06, I mean, they've just been putting out trash games just be and because people are Sonic fanboys, they'll go out and buy them, of course, and they'll make yeah. money. But, you know, they they need to start putting more heart into their games. And I think after they do that, after they get past the, the, the sales <clears throat> and the business aspect, they need, to, they need to actually put heart into their games. And, like, I've, I haven't played a Sonic game since Sonic 06 for good reasons because it was so bad. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And um, yeah, they, they want to revive series like Shenmue, but they don't want to like go all in with the, the remastered. And I don't know, man. <laughs> Sega is a weird, uh, it's a weird company for sure. Uh, the, the last good Sonic game was probably like Sonic Generation and it was released like in 2008, something like that. Uh, that's the last one. That's the last Sonic games I played. But um, yeah, Sega will. It's it's no surprise that they have been burned to the ground in terms of consoles and stuff like that. They they are a weird company and they are not treating their series uh, with much respect, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, that Sonic Mania game got great reviews, but yeah, it wasn't yeah. made by Sega. It was made by someone else. Yeah, they are a publisher now. So they they literally they need to push 
Sonic onto that team because obviously that that formula worked and whatever they're doing, uh, Sonic Forces, mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, yeah, I completely agree with you. Uh, Mr. E, thank you for the sub, dude. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Hope you enjoy the podcast. For sure. I'm back. Uh, Dopamine, welcome back. Uh, Eric, uh, regarding uh, No Man's Sky, uh, it will be cool to play, but seems way too envi- ambitious uh, for VR. Worries me. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a big game. That might be, a, once again, a lazy port for a VR game. Might not be working at all, actually. They don't have a, a good track record. <clears throat> um, next news. Santa Monica Studio hiring possibly for two future projects. More talent for future PS5 games, perhaps. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, like I said with the uh, Naughty Dog team, I think they are splitting. Santa Monica Studio is a huge uh, studio. So they might be like splitting teams, a bigger team, uh for probably uh, God of War uh, support for the first one. And uh, maybe they are working a little bit with God of War 2. That's my guess. And might be uh, splitting teams uh, and working on a smaller games. Uh, what are your predictions? What are your thoughts, Yemi? I think they're definitely going to work on the next God of War. I don't think it's going to be called God of War 2. I think they're going to go the route of like Infamous where they... Um, <clears throat> You know, they, they, they do, like, Second Son or... What's the other? Uh, or, like, Tomb Raider, where the first game was Tomb Raider, then it was Rise, then it was, um, uh, you know, whatever the newest Shadow. one is. Shadow. And um, I think they're going to do that kind of thing, where it's going to be, like, God of War, Fall of... Olymp- you know, something like that, where it's, like, a, a, a subtitle with the main title. I don't think they're going to do, like, God of War 2, because then people get too confused. I'm already kind of confused about the timeline of God of War games. I don't need this. I don't need this shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's for sure. I understand that. Uh, Mr. But yeah, is asking. Can... Yeah. Oh, yeah, not go, a problem. Go, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, I was just going to say, you know, I can definitely see them working on God of War, the next God of War game, definitely. Uh, especially, uh, I mean, I haven't finished the game yet. Um, so I, 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 I don't know their, you know, I don't know what the ending is, but, you know, I, I can definitely see them working on another one because it is very, very, very popular. It's actually one of the top rated games on PlayStation 4 right now. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. Uh, Mr. E is asking, why is PlayStation winning over Xbox One? That's a good question. What do I you have think? the answer. Exclusives. Yeah. PlayStation has better exclusives. Xbox, name an exclusive that has over an 8 out of 10. You can't, because there really um, isn't one. What was that, the game with um, like the TV series? A link to it. You remember this game? I I don't even I don't know don't know okay Uh, I just know Cuphead Cuphead well Cuphead see the problem is now like with Xbox it's not exclusive on Xbox anymore Cuphead you can get on the PC uh, and it's not really exclusive they can say it's exclusive all they want but the fact of the matter is I'm a I'm a PlayStation owner and I can play Cuphead on my PC you know yeah they they've kind of burned their bridge there with exclusives because now it's not really exclusive is it. No, but um, they are making but, money with PC games, so I guess it's not too bad. Yeah, but when they're calling it an exclusive, you expect it only to be on Xbox. You know, like the early games, like um, there was the um, that one was that was kind of like infamous with the uh, the blob guys that you killed. Uh, I forget what the name was, Sunset Overdrive. Uh, and there was also like games like um, that uh, that Recore Recore was it? I mean, they were yeah, just Recore, lackluster yeah. games. Gears of War, I, I thought that the, the Gears of War 4 was, was trash. I, I couldn't, I, me and my friend played through it. It was just a, a shell of what the series used to be. And they, yeah, they just can't pull the trigger on anything. You know, it, it's just like, wow, I don't even know. Yep. Uh, Dopamine uh, in the chat is talking about Gears of War. I, I was t- t- thinking about Gears of War too. I'm thinking about Halo, but they, they are, they don't have any like new series. They are, they have Halo and they have Gears of War. There's nothing else on Xbox, at least not for me, that interests me. And mm-hmm. I think a huge factor, actually, that uh, PlayStation is uh, winning all the way uh, with uh, against Xbox One is um, the E3 in 2014, 2013, where they kicked their ass so bad, man, with... Um, 
uh, the, the reselling of games, uh, the digital only consoles, uh, the price point, uh, like 100 bucks uh, lower than the Xbox One. Uh, right from the get go, it was like, um, it was, um, how do you say that? Um, like born to fail or something like that. Like mm. the, they announced the console and right after that, it was already failing and the, the console was not even released yet. So um, with the price and, point, once again, and you're right about the first party exclusive, like uh, Sony have like 15 studios or something like that, uh, first party, and they have a lot of uh, second party, like Insomnia Games are, are always working with them and uh, studios like that. And even third parties are, are releasing exclusive games to the PlayStation 4. So um, yeah, that, that's a huge part of why uh, PlayStation is winning over uh, Xbox, in my opinion. Yeah. And the games are consist- uh, consistently well done. You know, it's not like Xbox where like, because the last Halo was pretty bad, but the Halo before that was really good. Yeah. You know, I, I, they, they just don't have consistency because I think they don't really know what they want to do with a series. And Bungie left too. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a huge that's a, that was a huge blow. I mean, yep. Uh, Eric says I was a huge Xbox only guy. A P- PS One overkill. Yep, exactly. <laughs> I agree with you, Eric. Yeah. For sure, man. Next news: uh, Spider-Man PS4 New Game Plus coming super soon. How soon is super soon, Till? How soon is super soon? Probably what does the next that mean? update. I mean, I, I would think that their next update to the game, they're gonna add the free PlayStation Plus, and then they're gonna add the the play the, the not the PlayStation Plus, the, the New Game Plus trophies. They're gonna go along with it, kind of like they did with Horizon. Yeah, like two trophies or something like that with Horizon. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be two trophies and it's super make you hardcore. Play the entire game. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if how hardcore they're gonna make this one. I think I think a new game plus is pretty much just gonna be like uh, Arkham, the Arkham series, where uh, there's no indication, no indication when the when someone's attacking you. There's gonna be like limited hints, you know, stuff like that. Yep, uh, or something like God of War, even. Like you can keep all your stuff, all your upgrades, but you you go back and do all the story. Yeah, um, yeah, but harder, you know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's kind of how Horizon was and uh, the Arkham series too. Yep, exactly. And uh, the game, uh, the game's first expansion titled The Heist is due out next week, uh, October 23rd. So that's exciting too. Not sure there'll yeah. be any trophies on that one too. I would think there is since it's the Sony IP that uh, they're big on the trophies. They know what sells and trophies sell. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> they are not dumb about it. That is for sure. But God of War didn't, didn't have uh, any more trophies. I don't think so. Didn't? Oh. Nope. Oh. Nope. I was surprised about this. Yeah, I might be um, wrong about that. We'll check it We'll check it out later. I, I mean, games like Black, the, the that Black Panther game, Rise or the Black Tiger, Rise of Black Tiger, they had oh, that yeah. trophy. So why Easy doesn't God of War DLC have trophies? What the? <laughs> yeah, it was so bad, man. So bad. And uh, Game Controller is asking, how far into the PS3's uh, live did you guys buy it? Who paid f- <laughs> 599 for it at launch? I didn't. I didn't. I actually uh, making uh, the habit of uh, not buying consoles at launch day, like waiting for reviews, waiting if there's something broken inside the consoles. Uh, like design wise, uh, waiting to see if the games are good or not. So I haven't like I, I was playing on PS2 for like one or two years uh, since um, um, when the PS3 launched. Actually, uh, I was playing like JRPG and stuff like that on PS2. There's a great library on PS2, so I was not even mad about it. What about you, man? Yeah, I got mine during the big hack. They sent out mm. uh, GameStop sent out those hundred dollar coupons, and I got mine for like I think it was two hundred at the time. Uh, so I, I got like the slim version. I we do have uh, the original version here that could that was backwards compatible and all that, but uh, nothing beats that slim version. It's still running. It's still chugging along. It's great. Yep, uh, I got the um, the original sixty gigabyte, uh, which was um, backward compatible with um, everything actually. So it yeah. was like a PS2 and a PS3 and a PS1 all at the same time. Great freaking console, man. Yeah, Sony always makes great, well-built consoles. 
my PlayStation 2 still works. My PlayStation 1 still works. I mean, it, it's amazing. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, Dopamina said, uh, I bought two PS3. First one died, then got the Slim. Exactly the same thing for me. My original console died and I bought the Slim and uh, it's still up and kicking. Uh, DPL does. Uh, hey, Chrono. Hey, Yemi. I can stay uh, on for uh, more than a minute, but I saw you online wanting to say hi. Hope you guys are doing well. Appreciate that, man. What a great dude. All right. So All right. it's your uh, segment, dude. The ferrets drop. Oh, I am so ready for the ferret drop today. Um, a lot of big hitters coming out this week. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one being uh, another for your last scoot, right? Oh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much Crayola Scoot, I was looking into that. It's pretty much just a Splatoon ripoff. I mean, it, it literally is just Splatoon. <laughs> but with yep, you're, but, using, um, you're using these stupid little uh, tech decks or whatever you call them. Scooters. Uh, it seems like a Tony Ox a pro skater, man. Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Y yeah, man. No, no. Don't look up the gameplay. Just trust me. No, I, I know about this game. <laughs> I, it was on Kimailer, actually. Oh, here he goes. Yeah. I'm what fighting you, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's like um, it's you're like doing Splatoon. tricks and grinding stuff. And um, yeah, there's like um, stuff like Splatoon for sure. But the core gameplay, it seems like um, a Tony Ox on um, Jet... Uh, what? Uh, I don't remember the game name, but um, it's a ripoff between two games, actually. Tony Ox 5 and, and Splatoon. Let's Let's say that. Can we agree on that? Sure. Okay. Can go right ahead then. All right. So the first game on the list is For Honor Marching Fire Edition. Um, For Honor has been supported by the developers. I believe it's Ubisoft for since it came out now, which is huge. Um, but this is the ultimate edition. Uh, you have, it has all the DLCs and the new modes. So you're going to fight as a knight, a viking, a samurai, or the Wu Lin Warriors. As you battle for survival of your people in the various game modes, including PvP, Campaign, PvE, and Co-op. And the Co-op was pretty fun in this one. You go through the campaign on Co-op. There's now 16 unique heroes that fight across four factions. And you get to choose how you fight. Compete with friends in the new 4v4 Castle Siege Breach mode, which sounds freaking sweet. And there's an all-new arcade mode and a training mode for you noobs out there. So I think they're really embracing newer people coming to the game because training well, that should have been day one i mean i had to learn the game by just trial and error and 1v1 scenarios with people online to kind of learn what they do and then i kind of just to my yeah. own skill level um i grabbed the platinum for this game and i don't think there are any new trophies for it uh for, for the dlc um but it's still a pretty tough one um but I, with all the new modes and stuff like that that'd be pretty sweet and um all right. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you haven't gotten For Honor, I don't know how dead the serv servers are, but they were pretty dead when I left the game. But this might be the revival that it needs. F 59 to 59.99. Yeah, it's uh, it has all the four DLC packs and the new modes. Uh, it's yeah. a fair price. All right. I mean, not it... fair, fair, but you know, fair enough. I saw For For Honor like in several times at ten bucks. So. Yeah, they'll probably release it free on PlayStation Plus eventually. I mean. Yeah, the, the, the base edition. Yeah, the base one. Yeah, probably. All right. Next up is Halloween Forever. And this yeah. game is really seen on the 19th. It's a cool retro 2D side-scrolling platformer. And you play as the Pumpkin Man. It's kind of like Ghosts and Goblins mixed with Castlevania. You shoot candy corn, you fight bosses, and you explore this Halloween 8-bit world. And it looks pretty cool. Yeah, I, I was watching... Cool. I was watching Game Grumps play it a little bit. I I really think that it has a nice style to it, and it looks cool. I I, I think uh, I think it's gonna be a maybe not a smash hit, but it's gonna be a, a hit in my heart. Yep, I I, I ask a, a key uh, from uh, for the developers. Um, it seems cool, man. Totally my type of game. Uh, Eight bit, uh, cool platforming. Seems like it's controlling well too, and it's all wing team. So I guess. Um, I guess it's not too bad. Uh, Dopamine had said a buggy soft instead of yeah. Ubisoft. And Eric, yeah, yeah but I, I agree guess, with that. <laughs> yeah, a little bit for sure. And Eric said uh, Scoot will be huge. Uh, talking about uh, Scoot, Scooter Crayola. And the first Probably one. moved on from Scoot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. 
All right. So next up is Heavy Fire Red Shadow. Um, the only reason I'm including this game is because it's the only VR game that uh, actually interested me this time around. Um, but it is the next game in the Heavy Fire franchise. It's PSVR compatible, of course. Uh, it's set in the not-so-distant future where tensions with North Korea have ex- <laughs> accelerated to war. Uh, and you play as... Get this. You play as Sergeant Will. That's his name. Sergeant Will. Uh, amazing. Uh <laughs> And you step into this unforgiving battlefield, you establish a beachhead, and you hold your position behind a mounted machine gun. Enemies can come from any direction that's 360 degrees. You can call in supply drops and support, like attack choppers and infantry troops. You can get promoted and earn, like, 30 unlockable promotions. You also earn power-ups and upgrades to customize your machine gun, rocket launcher, and your health. It looks like a nice little horde defender game. Uh, it's definitely something that I would play uh, it, once it, yeah. you know, has a little price drop. But uh, yeah, and 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 games like this where it's it's made by uh, a developer that's not huge. You know, I've played the Heavy Rain, Heavy Fire series. It's it's not the most amazing thing, but I think this is a nice step for them, kind of putting out a VR kind of exclusive game that I could sell a little bit, especially because it looks kind of fun. You know, I, I right after Call was... of Duty though. I, uh, it seems like a bad move. But, but Black Ops doesn't have VR support now, does it? No. No, I guess. No, I, think, I guess you're right. I think it was the perfect time because they're like they're they're swooping in, going, "Hey, VR? Yeah, we got that. Blackout? No, no VR in that." Hmm. <laughs> I guess you're right. All right. Next up, we have the Jackbox Party Pack Five. Ooh, there's not even five of them. Uh, the biggest party pack yet. With five party games, including the return of the classic culture trivia mashup game, You Don't Know Jack, which was what the, the series started on, which was a great game. Um, cool so party this game. one, cool party yeah, game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and this one also has Split the Room, which is you create hypothetical situations. And you kind of vote on which one's the best one. You have Mad Verse City, where you write your own lyrics. Uh, you have Patently Stupid, which is a drawing game. And you also have Zuba Bucks, which you fling yourself at aliens. I'm not sure what that one's all about. Uh, you use phones and tablets as controllers. You can also use your browser. And you can play with up to eight people, plus an audience of up to 10,000 people. That's Woo! insane, man. That's cool. Yeah, it's another another addition into the Jackbox Party Pack. I'm sure we'll be seeing it all over Twitch and YouTube as it gets more popular, because the Jack and Bok games... They 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 bring in they bring in people. They definitely yeah, for do. Sure. This is what I was uh, this is what I was thinking too. Like streaming game with the chat and everything. It would be really cool. And it's um, on discount at uh, twenty three ninety nine instead of, of uh, ninety nine ninety nine. So for PlayStation Plus users only. Yeah, thank you, man. I don't know who's not a PlayStation Plus user. <laughs> yeah, Salt Squad One, welcome uh, to the stream. Welcome to the podcast. If you have any questions, drop them in the chat for sure. All right, next up is Lego DC's Super Villains. And in this game, you create and play as an all-new supervillain. Uh, you un- unleash mischievous antics and wreak havoc in this action-packed story. It's set in an open world like most Lego games are now, and the Justice League has vanished, and the Justice Syndicate, or as they're called in the comic books, the Crime Syndicate, has taken over. So this is pretty much just the story of uh, it was called the series was called Forever Evil uh, back in the New Fifty Two comic book era. Um, it literally is just that where the crime syndicate takes over, releases all the super villains, and uh, the Justice League is nowhere to be found, and some villains band together <laughs> and fight back. Okay. I literally already know the story to this game. I'm waiting on this one because I think sixty dollars for a Lego game nowadays is just too much money, especially yeah. after The Incredibles was such a bust for me. Um, so I'm definitely going to wait on this one, but I am interested because I'm a huge DC fan and I definitely would like to play it eventually, but I just don't have faith in Lego games right now. <laughs> I, I never paid like more than 15 bucks, I think, for a Lego game. So they are discounted uh, Avely even like months after uh, the release. There's mm-hmm. no reason why you would buy this game, even if you're super excited about this. There's so much Lego games. It's crazy now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's like two or three a year. I think last year was like the most Lego games came out because they had the Lego Ninjago movie, the video game, which is the longest title ever. They City also had the uh, Marvel 2 and something else came out the same year. I think it was a Star Wars game. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. 
Yeah, crazy. All right, so next is uh, one for you, Chrono. This is Resonance of Fate HD Edition. Dude, yep. Uh, we talked about this in the previous podcast. Uh, this is a JRPG uh, with a weird twist on it. This is a Sega, if I remember correctly. Why they don't put like full links to the store, man? I, if I want to buy this game, where would I go, right? Well, right. since it's not out till the 19th, usually that that's why they don't have anything up. Oh, that you might be right on this one. It's annoying though. But yeah, in uh, for sure. in this game, uh, you play. Oh, hold on. In okay, so this is a fate changing multi gun battle RPG, and it's now back with new 4K graphics. Get involved in ac- aerobatic gunfights while determining the destiny of the devastated Earth. What do you 4K did, did, slash HD? That's weird. It's it's just an HD remake. I don't know why yeah. they even put 4K on there anymore. It's a buzzword, right? Yeah, pretty much. So, did you play this one back in the day? Yep, I played this one. Uh, super art trophy list. We'll talk about the trophy list uh, later in the podcast. Um, it was like um, it's it's turn based, but uh, you can like move a little bit like a strategy game. And you need to like angle your guns and uh, create weird angles. And there's a lot of menus. It's really confusing. This is not the best JRPG out there. Uh, this is uh, if you like like um, super complex uh, JRPG games. This might be for you. I didn't like it uh, really much. Still have my copy of the PS3 version. Um, I would like. I think there's a demo on the PlayStation Store. You can try the demo if you want. Um, check out some gameplay before buying this game. This is my uh, advice to you. All right, you heard it from the JRPG master. Yep, this is me. Uh, next up is Starlink Battle. No, Soul Calibur Six. Almost passed it up. Uh, and Soul Calibur Six comes out uh, ten nineteen. Once again, it's the newest entry in the Soul Calibur series with an all new with all new gameplay mechanics, beautiful graphics. Um, and you have uh, it's a weapon based fighting game you play as you can also play as Geralt from the Witcher 3 if you want to it's just more soul caliber action i haven't played a soul caliber game since two. forever right i yeah. think on the gamecube it had link in it and that's the last one i remember playing and i really enjoyed it it's not like i didn't enjoy it i just i never got back into the series so i think this one might be where i come back and uh yeah always see, great games up. Always great games, always well reviewed too. Um, this is a quality game for sure. It's just the Soul Calibur doesn't sell much, I would say. But uh, always have exclusive characters like a Witcher Tree this time around. There, there was like uh, Metal Gear, and you said a uh, Link, right? Yeah, there was Link, and also the guy from Tekken was in the 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 uh, PlayStation version. The one with the, the white ears. Yeah, yeah. I don't. And remember then. His name uh, I think Ezio was in one for PlayStation. I yeah, think that was, right. and Darth Vader and Yoda were in another one. They've yeah. had good ideas. I've just I haven't picked them up though. I I, I feel bad because I really enjoyed the game when I was a kid, even though I didn't know how to play it. I I still really enjoyed playing it. Yeah, for sure, great uh, fighting game for sure. Yoda was a pain in the ass, said Eric. <laughs> yeah, because it was so small, right? It was a, like the the cheesy character from um, uh, Golden Eye sixty four, like. Uh, it was super, uh, super small, and uh, yeah, it was super cheesy, super cheap. Super well, cheap you know, character. if you had the skills of Count Dooku, you might be able to hold them off. Maybe, maybe. I, are you talking about Star Wars? Because I never <laughs> saw the movies, not even one. Wow. You didn't know that, huh? Right? No, no. Never saw you a know, single. There are Star there Wars are French movie. versions of the movie that you can you can watch. Oh, it's not about the language. <laughs> I know, but I'm just language. saying. <laughs> I, I should I should watch them actually. Uh, I might watch them with my uh, my son. I think he would love them. Uh, episode one through three are more slapstick until Revenge of the Sith, where everything kind of goes haywire and then you know kids start dying. And then uh, uh, four through six are of course the originals, which are you know the best of the series. And the newer ones are definitely geared towards more um, everyone. Uh, I think they've they've kept with the the everyone aspect until uh, well okay. Force Awakens was like everyone, and then the Last Jedi was like a mix of comedy and serious tones, which doesn't really make sense to me. But you know, I would I would start with Episode One through Three, just so you can kind of go chronologically 
even though it's not technically chronologically. Uh, you know, it's George Lucas didn't know what he wanted to do. He, he had his thumb up his ass and he was like, you know what? I want to make more Star Wars. And so you, yeah, that was my next question to you. Should I start with the first one? Yeah, I start with episode one and then go from there. And Fort is might be rough, right? It's like 40 years or something. It's it's still a great movie though. Yeah, it, okay. it, it holds up. It definitely does. I mean, the, the, especially you know the new versions of the movies with the CGI that are better and stuff like that. Of course, they 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 hold up really well. Um, and uh, you know, uh, the kids might not enjoy some of the parts in the movies because they're more geared towards adults. But yeah. it's still there's there's still those huge action scenes. Um, Salt Squad once said, uh, "Please watch it, word it." And uh, hey, Amy, I was the solo movie. I didn't. I didn't see the solo movie. I'm waiting for it to come out on Netflix. Oh, cheap bastard! I wasn't interested in it because I didn't really need a solo movie. You know, I I I liked Rogue One because it was just a well-made film, and it, you know, it, it it ended very well. But uh, yeah, Solo just wasn't interesting to me. I, I would rather have had a Obi Wan Kenobi movie in place of it. And uh, Salt Squad one said, uh, "Chrono, just get ready for the graphic dra graphics transition." So yeah, that's my main concern actually. Uh, I, I can handle it, but a six years old though <laughs> might lose him. I might lose him. So are you done with the ferrets, Rob? No. Uh, we have one more. We have Starlink, Starlink right? Battle for Atlas. This game has been all over my freaking Hulu. It's really annoying. Um, but this is another one of those games kind of like the Lego Dimensions, kind of like Skylanders. Yeah. But you build your ship, and then it comes up on the screen. And the Switch version has Star Star Fox, uh, Fox McCloud in there. So that's oh, kind of really? cool. Um, but you lead a group of pilots as you build your starship, literally. You explore the star system and battle the vile Grax and his forgotten Legion. And the Legion kind of looks like the Vex from Destiny 2, but we're not going to get into that game because, uh, you know, I go on rants about it. Um, but you gain the advantage with the entire first collection of pilots, starships, and weapons sold separately. Oh, <laughs> split screen, too? That's rare. Yeah, uh, it's it's a it's a game geared towards kids, and I think it was a really great idea for them to put in the split screen, and then, you know, a friend could bring over his ship, and you could play with your friend with the ship. That is a really cool concept. I like that. Um, um, but it just kind of adds clutter to your collection i i still have those lego dimensions figures all over the place and i just don't i don't play the game because i had burned out of it very fast <laughs> yeah for sure fair drop done yeah fair drop has been dropped this is what you think because i have a last one for you fast you know, striker you know <laughs> <laughs> no i got a free key for for this game actually uh developers send me one uh this is a bullet l like retro style a uh, game, uh, black, uh, the black vulture in the Discord server tried it. He really liked it. Uh, this is totally my type of game. I wanted to give it uh, to give them a shout out actually in the podcast. But I'll be uh, playing it on the channel. Maybe like release a video next week, something like that. Uh, I'll put it in the artist difficulty right away and die a lot. Uh, this is what we do on the channel. So uh, yeah, uh, it looks super cool. The the art style looks super cool. So there you go, man. Always bringing surprise to your ferrets drop. That is true. That is true. And people wonder why I stay awake at night. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, topic of the show is uh, since w there's a lot of rumors uh, for the PS5 titles, we thought uh, it was interesting to uh, at least try to guess what the launch titles uh, for the PS5 would be. So uh, we only took uh, first party uh, um, first party launch title, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So um, there you go. We have five each, and I'll let uh, Yemi start. I don't know if I'm stealing this one from you, but I my 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 prediction for the 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 game that comes shipped with the PlayStation. Hopefully, they'll ship a game this time. <laughs> I think it's gonna be an Uncharted game. Okay. And it's gonna be with Nathan Drake's daughter. Oh, so uh, developed by San Diego Studio, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to be the continuation of Uncharted 4, but it's going to be rebranded and uh, it's going to be rebooted okay. under the Uncharted name, but it's going to be, you know, his daughter's journey instead of himself. And he, you know, I, I could see Nathan coming back, you know, as like a, a little uh, surprise character here and there. But I think um, I think it's going to be kind of like a Tomb Raider type game where it's it's going to be it's going to be uh, the story about the daughter and the. You're gonna go through as, 
as her and you're gonna have way more adventures Yep, I think um, if they do another Uncharted, I think uh, the daughter of uh, Nathan Drake uh, would be a safe bet, actually. Um, yep, uh, for sure. I, it's not on my list, though. It's not oh, on good. my list. Good. Good. Um, this one might be on your list, actually, though. Um, I think, and this is like a long shot for sure, but I think that Stranding uh, by Hideo Kojima has been pushed back. Uh, for for the PS4 for the PS5, a launch day is a long shot. Um, I'm it's it's a safe bet to say that this game it will probably be on PS5 at this point. Uh, but launch day too, that will be one of the best launch title ever in all the the PlayStation ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah, have it I, on your list? No, no, I didn't put it on my list because I've said it a lot during the podcast, so I, I okay. didn't want to repeat myself. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, it's a, it's a good choice because uh, it, it's been pushed back so much and the graphics are looking stellar. I, this is I, insane, I, man. You know, I, I'd understand if they had to push it back because, you know, they needed a harder, a better processing system. system. Um, yep. Uh, yep. 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 Uh, next <laughs> one. Yep. N next one for me. Uh, I was I was thinking of a new IP or a new I'm sorry, a new game from the Ratchet and Clank series. After the reboot, remaster, soft reboot, remaster came out and it sold so well and got such rave reviews, I and instead of going with like a Knack, sorry Coco, instead of going with Knack, I think they're going to put out a Ratchet and Clank game. It's going to be uh, based on the new rebooted series. And I think, uh, and it's not going to be part of the movie. So we'll, we'll <laughs> but I, I think a new Ratchet and Clank is a, is a safe bet. Because uh, they've already said that Naughty Dog doesn't want to do any more Jack and Daxters, so on the other side of things, we have Ratchet and Clank, and you know, I think it's a good. I think that would be a great starter. You know, put it on the put it on, on, on disc and put it in the in the bundle. Yep, um, it was in my leftovers actually. Uh, Ratchet and Clank from Insomniac would in my leftovers means that they didn't crack the top five on my list, but um, uh, that's a great pick actually. Uh, Salt One is asking, what do you guys think PS5 will launch? Uh, we already answered that uh, previously in the podcast, but uh, for me, it's next. Well, for both of us, actually, I think it's uh, Christmas season um, 20, next 2020. year. Right? 2020. 2020. Yeah. I think it will be next year, man. I don't know. 2019 might be too soon. Like you, you, you talk about it a little bit at the beginning of the, 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 the year. You let the rumors roll, and at E3, boom, you announce it, and you release it like four months after that. What I about think that? I think they're they're gonna they're gonna talk about it at E3. They're gonna announce what the console looks like and what games are gonna be shipped with it uh, at the at the PlayStation conven convention, and then the next year they'll they'll do the you know the big release for it. They'll build up all that stuff, and they'll be putting out tons and tons of different things at the next E3 and all that. Yeah, um, everyone's bet is a good bet, I guess. At this yeah. point, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my next one. Um, so, Resogun is a game I really enjoyed. Um, it's one of the first game I played on the PS4. I think uh, Ausmark uh, is a safe bet for Resogun Two. Uh, it was released free for PlayStation Plus right at the launch of the PS4. Um, Resogun 2, uh, I mean, the first Resogun was a great, uh, like, benchmark for uh, everything the PlayStation 4 could achieve uh, in terms of particles and graphics and effects on the screen. Um, so I think Resogun 2 uh, would be absolutely awesome in the launch title, and they need, like, little titles, smaller titles like that um, for the PS5 launch. It cannot be, like, all AAA games, so Resogun would be a good fit. Yeah, I think I think so. I still play Resogun. It's, it's yeah. still a fantastic game. Yeah, I booted up. Um, one of my friend um, came to my house the other day, and we booted up, and we had a great fun. And all the DLC are really different, actually. Yeah, definitely, um, it bringing like a new aspect to the game, new gameplay aspect. So uh, all the DLC are awesome. And this game is, is might be one of the 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 game I um had the most fun on the PS4 so far. Next. I wouldn't say it. that that's not for me, but I, it is in terms fun. of arcade games. I mean, um, next one for me, and you're gonna laugh at me, like I, you're already smirking. Uh, <laughs> I think 
I think a new PlayStation All Star Battle Royale game could be in the no. works for PlayStation Five release. Yes, Why? I think so. They're Why? gonna try and compete with Smash Brothers Ultimate, and they're gonna go, "What's more than just putting in every single character we can possibly imagine into the game?" It's probably gonna flop. I'm not saying it's gonna be good, but I think that they could possibly be thinking that way because you know Sony and Nintendo. They used to be partners, and they split, and now they kind of follow each other a little bit. And I think with Nintendo doing the huge PlayStation All, not PlayStation All, Nintendo doing the huge Smash Brothers yeah, Ultimate, for sure. this is a huge they're gonna be them. like, oh man, we have so many characters now. Let's just throw them all into the game, give it a new coat of paint, make it about the same. There we go. PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale Two. Oh, a yeah. mouthful. Uh, no, just no, man. Please. Well, it could be a great game, actually. Um, they have a lot of new characters, too, that they could add to the games. But um, nah. I, I think with a little tweaking, it could be a good game. It could be but, a good game for sure, yeah. But they're probably not going to tweak anything. They're just going to keep it the same. <laughs> and they're going to just add a bunch of new characters. That's pretty much what I think. But if they use a great uh, developers, uh, I guess it could be great, right? could be a smash hit, actually. Any game has the ability to be a good game, except for Crayola Scooter. I think it will be a great game, man. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. Um, the next one for me is a non-name, a Naughty Dog game, which is not The Last of Us 2. Uh, a smaller title, um, maybe a new universe, like not not The Last of Us to scale, you know what I mean? Just a smaller games, um, maybe for a beginning, a new series, a new franchise, a new IP, um, so something story-driven, maybe a little bit like Uncharted The Lost Legacy in terms of length and uh, scales. And um, yep, um, maybe something like sci-fi, maybe something... Uh, open world in the past or something like that. I don't know, but um, I think it's a safe bet that Naughty Dog are hiring are, are new um, talents uh, to probably split their teams and work on a PS5 project. And launch title, I'm not sure, but uh, it will be uh, sending consoles for sure. That's a yeah. Uh, I can see that. Yeah, why not? Uh, what, what do you think of this? Okay. PS4 what was the the Shadowfall Killzone Shadowfall was the was the pretty much the release title alongside Knack. Yeah. What if we get a new Killzone releasing with PlayStation Five? You, yeah, that was uh, huge when it was uh, announced and released. At uh, it's not it was launch window though I think. Mm -hmm. I, I still call it a release. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Uh, that. Pretty much the first like month of games I I I say are release games because yep. it's like. And anyways, I think I think a new Killzone game would be perfect for PlayStation Five. I mean, they would just keep up with the tradition of a new Killzone game with a new console. And um, I I didn't quite enjoy Shadowfall. It was a little buggy for me. I think because I was downloading it digitally and my internet sucked back then. Um, but I could definitely see a new Killzone coming out that that is maybe VR compatible, and uh, definitely would utilize the ps5 strengths kind of like ps4 they tried to use the touchpad thing i think they're gonna use whatever the new fangled thing is for the playstation 5 yep um that's a great pick actually i like that um next one for me is dreams dreams ah. by media molecule <laughs> that might be the reason why um maybe they need more processing power Maybe the PS4 cannot handle like all the, the building stuff because the game is really huge and it seems really complex too. So they might be pushing it like on in the PS5 like launch window. Uh, the, the, the name of the game is well known uh, among uh, PlayStation fans for sure. Um, and might be a great game for kids. And we see the, the success of Minecraft and stuff like that. People love to build stuff. Even in Fallout, there's a lot of building stuff. Um, so people like that. I'm, I don't I really enjoy building stuff in games. I prefer to play stuff that, uh, people are making, but, um, dreams would be cool, man. Launch title, perfect title for, um, uh, like the, the, the launch window of the PS5. Yeah, I definitely think so too. Uh, especially because we haven't really heard anything about dreams. It could be. Could yeah, be. for sure. Omi G, it's... Retro Fellow is in the chat. What's up, dude? How are you, you man? If you have any questions, drop them in the chat. 
Um, the last game for me uh, is a game that hasn't been around since the PlayStation 3, and that was Twisted Metal. Oh, uh, oh I like that. I like if that. If they just fix the servers and they fix some of the gameplay, I think it could be a great starting game for the PlayStation, and it's a series that is loved by a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, now, I would prefer a new Vigilante 8, but I will go with the Sony exclusive because uh, obviously this is a PlayStation podcast. <clears throat> so I think I think they I think a twisted metal game would be perfect for a launch title alongside, you know, maybe like a new Ratchet and Clank for the kids and they have twisted metal for the adults. Yeah. Man, that's a great pick. I have even thought about it actually. And Eric agrees in the chat too. Uh twisted metal. You see <laughs> this game twisted metal would be sweet. Retro fellow also agrees with you. That's a great pick. I'm yeah, I agree Wait, with that. You're that, jealous. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm disappointed in myself. All right, so my last pick is okay. I'll say Knack Three because uh, oh, Knack yeah. One was a launch title, and you need some game, some type of platformers in the launch window of the consoles uh, to bring kids into the the console and like younger players. Like my son, which is uh, six years old, will be all over Knack Tree for sure. Or a game developed by Japan Studio that is a platformer. So Knack might be dead. Uh, nobody knows. Knack 2 was way better than Knack 1, in my opinion, at least. Um, not sure about the sales. So Knack Tree is not a safe bet by any means. Uh, but uh, Japan Studios is known for uh, making games like this, making good games uh, like Knack. So... I guess I guess a knack or another sort of platformer would be great for the console. And uh Retro Fellow agrees with me. Knack tree most likely. Doesn't agree. He said Knack tree most likely, but I'm not sure if he wants it or not. Nobody wants Knack, man. I don't Nobody wants Knack. I, I, I have n I the only person I've talked to who's liked Knack is Coco. Coco, yeah. Yeah. I just I don't understand it because it's just such a basic just Oh, it's just a bad game. It's and you said the Knack Two was better, and I agree with that. But it's hard to polish a turd, you know. <laughs> yeah, but Knack Two is is way better, man. I I know it's better, but it's not like way better. Where I'm like, oh. Yeah, I understand that. Um. Um, and Retro Fellow says in the chat, "Oh, there's a little big planet four, but uh, Media Molecule is working on Dreams." And they will need to give um, Little Big Planet 4 to an another studio once again, like the third one. And didn't went well for the third one. They basically bring Little Big uh, Planet uh, series to the ground. So, um, yeah, that that might be it too, Little Big Planet. Do you have any leftovers, Jimmy? No, those were all that I I thought of bringing up. I mean, there there might be like a VR game in there, like I said. Uh, with Killzone, yeah, for but sure. I don't, th I don't think they'd do like a VR exclusive. It would be something like Killzone, where it has a VR component, but the base of the game is just for regular gamers. Yeah, I agree with you. And uh, Retro says LBP3 was a meh. Yeah, but it was <laughs> it was not developed by Media Molecule, and it shows. Uh, they rushed the game and they they killed the series. And yeah, PSVR uh, stuff on the PS5, no doubt, and that will be a lot of titles. For PSVR, it m might be like integrated, like the headset will come with a bundle with PS5, maybe. Well, well, I mean, we saw what happened with Xbox and the and the Connect, and, and Xbox sold worse because they had to have the Connect in there, and it was integrated into the system, even though they've taken it out now. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't think it would be a good idea to. I, I maybe like have a bundle that's a regular PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. The, oh, okay, yeah, I think that would be a good idea. But I, that would cost a lot of money. And I don't think people would be willing to spend upwards of $800 for a system and the VR headset together. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, that is for sure. So I have a couple of games that I put out in my leftovers. Not for lunch window or something like that, but God of War 2, Spider-Man 2, uh, New Ratchet & Clank, you talked about this. The Last of Us 2 uh, will probably still come out on PlayStation 4 because uh, the, the first la The Last of Us... Uh, was released on PS3 and the PS4 was already in the, the Horizon, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, Horizon Zero Dawn 2, or at least the next project from uh, Guerrilla. Uh, Days Gone, it's been a long time since we heard about Days Gone. Not sure what's happening with that. I just thought about um, Dead Island 2. 
Yeah, but why not? And maybe the series isn't dead. Maybe they're just waiting for the PS5. <laughs> you still have hope for this series, right? Nah, it's probably dead. I. <laughs> <laughs> and Ghost of Tsushima. Oh yeah, that'd be that'd be an interesting day one release or release window. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I st still think it's coming out for uh, the PS4 too. Still think it's coming out for the PS4. Yeah, me too. I, I can see that. Uh, Xolars, welcome to the stream, dude. How are you, man? And he says, uh, how about a Bloodborne 2, which is an awesome pick, man. I like that. Uh, maybe not launch title. Like, you, you need to space out your AAA games a little bit um, in terms of launch window, because otherwise you'll... Like, everybody will buy oh. the PS5, but you will not have any games after that. But well, Bloodborne my... 2 is a huge title. It is, but I think that if they release Bloodborne 2 within the launch window, I think that's too small of a player base. Like, a normal gamer who's getting the bundle isn't going to want, like, a From Software game that is difficult. They're going to want... Yeah. A game that ever they're they're Sony especially is gonna want a bundle a game that everyone can kind of play you know accessible right like it makes sense for Bloodborne two to be on the PlayStation five if there is going to be a Bloodborne tour I think they already announced there was going to be one yeah and it, I, I would I would I would cheer and be happy for it but I know that it's not gonna be within the first few months of the PlayStation five because those from software games are so intense and people just they'll 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 skip it because you know it's too tough and they don't yeah. want to play an easy baby game like knack three. So, you know, they're just going <laughs> to stick with the PlayStation four for a little bit. Um, retro says, uh, bloodborne two will be two years into the PS five, which is a safer bet. I guess a uh, game consoler says a PS all star battle. While ah, it's already, see? it's see? already on the list. It's already on the list. Yemi's list. So yeah, I'm not sure about this one. Uh, yeah, like Bloodborne was a PS4 exclusive, so it makes sense. It totally makes sense to come out only on PS5, that's for sure. Launch a window, though, I'm not sure. Um, make Destiny 3, Ritual no. Failure? No, just no, okay. We're, we're, we're just, no, we're skipping over Destiny today. I'm not <laughs> going to be ranting about it today. <laughs> oh, uh, I think I have the... Okay, uh, Series Trash, uh, God of War 2. Yeah, we talked about this. Uh, God of War 2 or something else... From Santa Monica Studio, maybe uh, launch window once again. Uh, it's pre pretty sure it's, it's coming out on PlayStation Five at this point, um, but um, not sure in launch window. I just hope they don't do what they did with the PlayStation Four, where like most of the launch games are already on PlayStation Four or Three. You know, like Black Flag and Ghosts, Call of Duty Ghosts, and Battlefield Four, and they just had little codes in there when you bought them, like, hey, you know, spend five dollars on the PlayStation Four and get it for you know for five dollars. Yeah, I, I hope they don't do that. Or if they do, don't make those the big things that are coming out. You know, yeah, make some exclusives for the PlayStation Five that matter, mm -hmm. not, not just knack. <laughs> and Game Consoler says uh, Gran Turismo, which is, is a polyphony game. Um, they are still trying to bring stuff into uh, Gran Turismo Sport, I think it's called. So I'm not sure if they will be ready for uh, ready for the PS5 uh, launch title. Maybe a port, like a complete edition into the PS5 launch title. Gran Turismo still sells, man. It's one. It's the best selling game on PlayStation One. Mm -hmm. So it's a big, big name. But uh, I think they buried a little bit the series to the ground with the latest, uh, like the P the Gran Turismo 5 Prologue. And after that, Gran Turismo Sport, which didn't get any traction at all. So uh, I'm not sure about this series, man. Yeah, I think the same point kind of comes up where the racing games are a very... They're not a small community, but you know, it's a its a one sect of the Sony PlayStation community. And I don't think they're going to put out something that's going to be like, th like that. You know, just like Bloodborne. You know, it's not... They're going to want to make, make a game and put out a game that more than... The regular amount of people are going to play or you know more demographics can play yeah that makes sense and Gran Turismo is not accessible at all man this is not an arcade game this is a real simulator game um so it's not accessible enough i think mm -hmm. like forza is way better for uh, younger players and kids uh, i would say uh mario kart yeah mario kart is a great pick too Cra what crash about crash team racing, racing? Yeah. yeah what about that man 
Um, do, do you do uh, something like that? Like when someone said the same thing, Americans do that? Like someone says the same thing, you're holding on uh, like your little finger, no? No, uh, no? we usually, we usually uh, no. <laughs> like you don't make a wish or something like that? No, I, I've never heard of that. So that might sound weird to you, right? I mean, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Canadian or at least in Quebec, we do that. Not sure what that means, though. All right, so let, let's switch to the next segment, man. Because All right. It's, it's confusing right now. People are starting Americans to get angry don't understand me. It's going, the, the podcast is going too long. Yeah, it's a stream. It's not a podcast, so it's, <laughs> it's all good, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, Retro Fellow is also Americans, too. He, he says what is happening. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll stop talking about that. But uh, Canadian and Quebecers uh, understand me, I think. I hope so. You got that Quebec ten- the demographic around your fingers, man. <laughs> all right so the next segment of the show uh one of the last two is uh called trophies only trophies uh we talk about trophy list uh, we have three this week uh the first one is lego dc super villains seems like a classic lego uh trophies trophy mm-hmm. list uh complete all the, the chapters and there's a lot of chapters man there's a lot of chapters yeah one, it, two, i three. just noticed that jesus christ there's 20 chapters. Oh man, this is if you're going for the platinum on this, this is going to be a boring one with all those levels that you have to play at least twice to get everything. Oh my god. Yeah, uh, twice, and sometimes you need something in like stage seven to complete stage one, and uh, you need a guide. But uh, like I think Avengers, no, um, Lego Jurassic Park had 20 levels, but the levels were quite short, so that might not be too bad actually. I really like Jurassic Park. I didn't even feel the length of that one. But when I was doing the original Lego Marvel superheroes, I felt every second of that one. So in negative terms? Yeah. Yeah, it was just the levels were long and they were also boring. But did you like uh, Jurassic Park? Yeah, I love Jurassic Park. That was actually on my top 10 games list of that year. It was yeah, so the, um, awesome game, man. I loved it too. I'm a huge fan of the movies actually, but I love this game, man. Super yeah. well done. Mm-hmm. I, I just I'm I'm looking for Lego to capture that um, that spark again, and uh, they haven't really gotten there yet. Now, yeah, well, the Incredibles was a weird pick for a game. I feel and they like. also they made you play the second game first, and I was like, I haven't seen the movie yet, so I'm going to play the second game first. <laughs> yeah, and it's super. There's a lot of spoilers. Um, yeah, yeah, but it's basically like spoiling all the movies. So, um, like Jurassic, I think I. I think it was Jurassic World, which I haven't saw when I played the game and totally spoiled the, the movie for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, all the big moments in the movie were spoiled, man. Spoiled for me. At least it was still a good movie, unlike uh, Fallen Kingdom. You didn't like Jurassic World 2? No, I, I thought it was... What? I thought, I thought it was bad. Dude, that was awesome. It was an awesome movie, dude. Ah, oh, come on! The 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 freaking Deus Ex Machina with the with the dinosaurs. I mean, the one part where they're in the balls and the T Rex comes and just eats the one dinosaur, and then runs away. Yeah, like what is that? That was come awesome, on. right? No, I just thought it was dumb. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. You're the first one that says that movie's bad, man. All the I mean, critics. It's not, it's not. It's not horrible. It's just it's a mediocre. It was worse than it was worse than the first. It was worse than Jurassic World, I think. I think so too. The first one was really, really, really good and captured the essence of the original trilogy. Second one was more like almost sci-fi. Like Dude, with, I, uh, I would rather take Jurassic World three or Jurassic Park three over over Lost Kingdom. The third one, I, I like them all almost equally. Actually, the third one was quite short, but the action scenes were awesome. In the third yeah, one, yeah, I like. I I thought that's just another mediocre one to me because I, you know, I thought that the the CGI effects were worse and the practical effects were also worse in that one. Um, but but Fallen Kingdom just felt fake to me. I I I couldn't I couldn't watch it seriously. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. I saw the, all those movies like one month ago again, like the original trilogy once again with my son. And uh, Jurassic uh, Fallen Kingdom, I went to the theaters to see it. Um, mm-hmm. Me yeah, too. I, I, I love Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. 
I love Jurassic Park and World 2. I just thought that the phone came out with a step Jurassic back. World 2. I hate Jurassic... Yep, go on record. Everyone in the chat, Jurassic Park... Yummy says Jurassic World 2 sucks. Me too. Um, Jurassic Park 1, 2, and 3 I find enjoyable. Uh, Jurassic Park 1 is the greatest, of course. That yeah, the OG is, uh, is always usually the best. Uh, yeah. But Jurassic Park 2 is really enjoyable. And the third really movie, good. Really good It had movie. a nice flow to it. I mean, I, I really liked how, um, how the movie went. <laughs> I just uh, like I said, the, those practical effects were just really bad in that one. I don't, I don't think they had the big enough budget to, to do it. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. All right. Anyways, uh, back to the trophy. About that. <laughs> <laughs> um, second trophy list is a resonance of faith. We talked about this one uh, a little bit earlier. If you want, um, if you want to platinum this game, it's like one hundred hours. Um, it's one full playthrough. I think it's the same trophy list as the PS3 version too. It's one mm. full playthrough, and um, it's one full playthrough and uh, a partial second playthrough. And I talked about this in the next in the previous podcast. This is what I'm. Uh, you you see my mouse, um, Yemi? Uh, yeah. You see the trophy list, the the trophy tiles there. They yeah. are completing each other's. This is what I was talking about the the other day. Oh yeah, that's cool. When like I don't have them in order too, but uh, yeah, 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 it's in order. All right, so yeah, uh, it's completing each other. It's making like a little like Japanese thing. So this is what I was talking about, and they kind of gave up after like ten <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> trophies. Ran out of ideas. Yeah. Oh, fuck that, man! It's too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's a re- really hardcore um, trophy list for sure. Something to add about Reasoners of Fate, Yemi? Uh, most of them are secret, so not not really. I, I don't like to spoil myself on games. You, you won't play this one, too. Well. <laughs> game Consolers, I'm sure, uh, already uh, knows about this game. Uh, he's a huge JRPG fan, so <laughs> maybe he knows about this game. All right. So why am I making so much? Oh, I'm incognito. That's why. Oh. I'll fix that in the next podcast. <laughs> uh, the next one is Home Sweet Home uh, doesn't have a platinum though that was surprising to me because it's quite a long game uh, it's mm-hmm. like 5 hours um, usually like smaller games get platinum like Sigi a fart for Milizuna have a freaking <laughs> platinum and this game doesn't have one um, there's a lot of miscellaneous uh, like hide in a vase or something like that and um, there's uh, all collectibles and there's a secret ending, fi- finish the outro, which I don't know about, but seems like a straightforward uh, trophy list. Mastek, welcome to the stream, dude. Man. Super happy to have you here. It's been a while. How's um, Twitch? Th- this <laughs> game, the trophy list reminds me of the original Outlast, uh, which also didn't have a platinum trophy, which was weird, because you had to go through the game without yeah. dying on the hardest mode, and that was like crazy. And- Hardcore stuff, man. The yeah. insane mode in the first Outlast is absolutely insane. So you, you, uh, as soon as you die, you basically restart the game all over again, right? Yep, it sucks. That sucks. That totally sucks. I know. I got uh, when I was doing it on PlayStation, I uh, got. Let's see. I got all the way to the end where the shadow guy starts attacking you, and I took a wrong turn and I died. And I was like, "Oh, you gotta be kidding me." <laughs> Uh, have you finished? Uh, have you got it or? No, I never got around to completing it. And even the second game, the second Outlast, have some uh, something similar, right? I think so. Yeah. And it's even longer. Uh, I think the first one is harder too. Second game is more lenient in terms of instant death and stuff like that. Um, but Home Sweet Home, uh, totally recommend it. Awesome game if you want. Like our game, like Outlast, like we said, this is insane and this is really good. And it's based on Thai, uh, Thai mythology too, which mm-hmm. is kind of special. And um, I don't remember another game that is based of Thai mythology, honestly. And it's really special, really scary. Remind me a little bit of The Grudge. You saw oh, those yeah. horrors movie? Yeah. Um, the Grudge was super scary to me. Super yeah. scary to me. Super scary. Super scary. All right. So um, this is a segment where we usually uh, answer questions from the fans. I gave Yemi three choices and he take one and we talk about it. Um, since we are, we have a chat 
right now. Um, it would be cool if you guys drop question in the chat. Um, gaming for gaming's sake, amen, at work, at launch. I won't be buying the PS5 at launch. Don't trust Sony after the PS4 Pro. What does that mean? Yeah, I don't know what that means. We'll be waiting a few re a few years and clearing my PS4 black backlog. So the first the first part of the sentence. Not sure if there's any issues, known issues with the PS4 Pro. First time I'm hearing about it, and I like your thinking um, regarding waiting like at least a few months before buying a new console. Like finish your PS4 uh, backlog, and after that jumping into the the, the PS5 uh, life cycle. This is in this is really good actually. I like that. Yeah. Um, editing is gone. Gonna go relax. I take it easy, everyone. No problem, Rick. Thanks for sticking with us, man. Appreciate you. Keep keep up the awesome content. Peace out. No problem. Thank you so much for the support, dude. Uh, what was the question I asked last week uh, on Discord? Yeah, that's actually a good ID. That is actually a good ID. So we'll answer since Game Consolers is uh, in the chat. We'll answer is a uh, question he asked in the Discord server. So the question is no choice for you, Yemi, this week. Sorry about we that. We could answer multiple questions. Does he have more than one question, too? That is the question. Or we could just you just take it from the chat after we do the one. Yeah, okay. Let's do that. So, Game Consolers, what's the one game from your piles of shame that has brought you the most shame? One that you're embarrassed to even to admit you never finished? Ooh. You need to, to think about it, right? Uh, let me let me pull up my PlayStation profile. Yeah, why not? Just give me a minute here. I can I'll find one very easily. <laughs> uh, I cannot do that. <laughs> I'm incognito. But um, for me, it's probably like God of War, which I haven't like finished yet. I played a lot when it was released, um, and after that, I just I just played something else. And I'm a huge fan of God of Wars. I have all the platinum for all the games. So um, not uh, not in my pile of shame since it's so new, but um, that will be my pick probably at least for now. Um, yeah, I don't think of any other games that I have shame on because I usually uh, finish all my games, at least games I enjoy. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I don't have like a list of shame, a pile of shame. I don't have that. I don't remember it at least. At least yeah. not on PlayStation. On PlayStation, I have one game that was a like good game that I'm ashamed to say I haven't finished, and then I have one game that I'm ashamed that I bought and never finished. Um, and the one that I that I bring up to a lot of people, which was on my top ten for last year, it's called Tooth and Tail. It was like this really cool, like eight bit, like it was almost like Command and Conquer, except you're using animals and they amazing. It was really awesome, and I wish that I had gone back and finished. I could, pro I can go back and finish it still, but I, I got so distracted and and uh, I totally forgot about the game. And uh, it's one of those games that I, I'm ashamed that I haven't finished, that I haven't got back to. All right, all right. Yeah, I'm still thinking about it. And every games I love, I finish them, and I try to platinum them them too. So, ah, uh, no, no. I found I found my biggest shame ever. Go. Why did I buy this game? I have no clue. But it was on sale, and I was like, "Oh yeah." Um, so if you remember the game called Lawbreakers that came out last year, yeah, it was a Overwatch clone. No, uh, I decided to buy it. I played it once. I think I spent like thirty dollars on it on the special edition, <laughs> and uh, haven't played it since. <laughs> that's a big pile of shame right there. It is. That's that's like on the top of my shameful pile. I mean, there's other like smaller games that I bought, but they're only like a buck each. Like that. Uh, there's that one horror game for the VR that's like has the guy with the fish head. And I forget what it's called. That game was real bad. Um, I don't remember this man. And then uh, there was also a game called um, uh, um oh geez what was it called? Oh, the Surge. Oh my God. That game, I bought. Bad, that's right? another game. That's another game that I was like, oh, I should be okay at this game because I play a lot of the Dark Souls games. I just yeah. hated this game so much. The Surge was so bad. Yeah, I remember this game. Uh, it was bad, man. But yeah, I did that, that. Those are the two games probably on the top of my pile of shame. I, yeah. As for like 
platinum trophies that I've gotten that are like really super easy that anyone could do. I mean, I I did Mega Mind. I bought it off of Amazon. <laughs> easy platinum too. Very easy, very easiest platinum you can grab, besides from a Telltale game. And then also uh, for for other tr games that I bought simply just to platinum them, uh, I think my name is Mayo is uh, on the top of that oh, list no. too. Oh no, yeah me. <laughs> I didn't I didn't I didn't stack it though. I just did it once. Okay. So I don't know if that's redeeming. Bad, but... Yeah. <laughs> uh, gaming uh, for gaming sake, no, no. I meant that Sony should not should should have not released the Pro. So the Pro had no problem, but he thinks that uh, or she thinks that uh, it's a bad idea to uh, have released the Pro. So that's what she meant or he meant. Mm. Yeah, uh, PS3 I think it was just like a half step, you know. I yeah. It was like it was because PlayStation it's, Pro it was for 4K, right? Yeah, it was simply just to add the 4K capability, but I, I never upgraded to it because, one, my original PlayStation still works, and two, I don't think it's a good enough upgrade. Like I think the PlayStation 5 is going to take it to the next level, hopefully. Yeah, for sure. Um, Xoller said uh, PS3 had some hardware issues at launch, I, I believe. Yeah, the original PlayStation 3 was a clunky, but the Slim, that's, the Slim that's, is, that's, is perfect, that, man. Yeah, it, it still works for me. Huh? Yeah. And I played a lot of the Slim, and it's yeah. still working. Um, I think on my pile of shame is one game that's Dark Souls 2. Never finished it. And Dark Souls 1, I went almost to the end and never finished it. Dark so, Souls yeah. 2 is intense. Like, that's one of those games that's like, it doesn't work the way it's supposed to work. Yeah. <laughs> that's another game I couldn't finish either. I went through 1, 3, and Bloodborne, and... And I'm I'm going through Nio right now, and Dark Souls Two I've never went back to because it was just like, like Dark Souls One's pretty lenient on the enemy placement for a Dark Souls game, but yeah. Dark Souls Two like there's like these mini bosses, like there's like these turtle dudes at this one point, and that's as far as I got, and I was like, holy crap, what a horrible game design, and I think they made Dark Souls Two so hard because everyone was like jacking off to Dark Souls One, ah. Uh. Yeah, but there's a limit. Uh, and Dark but, Souls 2 is the limit. Like, that is... Out of all the games, Dark Souls 2 is definitely the hardest one, in my opinion. All right. Um, the only one I played is Demon's Souls, and I finished it. So it's not on my pile of shame. Never uh, Platinum yet, though, because it's, like, several playthroughs. And honestly, they didn't really like Demon's Souls. Um, I thought it was a little bit clunky, but uh, and super slow, too. This is, like, um, one of the slower games I played. And um, this is why I would love to play Bloodborne because I heard that the game is way faster mm -hmm. uh, in terms of gameplay. So this is what this is my like biggest complaint about uh, Demon Souls. So that might be like the game for me, like hardcore games, uh, hardcore game and uh, fast paced game. Not fast paced, but uh, faster pace mm -hmm. than uh, yeah, Dark definitely. Souls. And they also mirrored Dark Souls Three off of a more Bloodborne style, so you might like that one as well. All right, and I love Bloodborne, Platinum, it and Dark Souls Three was easy," said Exalers. Yeah, Dark um, Souls Three is 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 pretty easy. Uh, out of all the games, I think it's probably the easiest one. Um, but I think it's just, maybe it's just because I went through Bloodborne first and I got used to the faster controls. But I mean, going going from Bloodborne to Dark Souls Two was a real easy switch. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I said for sure, but I never played them. Yeah, I'm just doing something <laughs> else in the background. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I did a poll on Twitter um, to see exactly what people wanted to see. I had like Super Mario Odyssey, I had Bloodborne, I had Crash Bandicoot, and I had another game which didn't get e even a vote. And um, I got like 60 votes and Bloodborne won ends on, man. Hell yeah. And uh, Super Mario Odyssey was quite close, but uh, Bloodborne is well loved by the community. So... Um, I would love to try it on stream. The The issue I have with Bloodborne is that I probably need a guide, right? I have no idea where I'm going with that. You want like, to do one playthrough where you're blind. That's that's a recommendation blind, for no, me. No guide? Mm -hmm. That's how I did it. And then uh, I had help from a friend. And it was a great experience because you got to learn the game yourself instead of following in someone's footsteps. But like the chat could probably help me, right? They can, but you're going to be ahead of the chat no matter what you do. Uh, and uh, you can run into some sticky situations, which is better if you don't know going into it because you're going to learn yeah, the game a yeah, little bit I better. Yeah, I understand what you mean. So you want me to die one over and over, right? 
Well, I didn't say that. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm still game for teaming up with you and going through the game. I, I just, I, I know that I, when I go through a Dark Souls or a Bloodborne or something like that, I like to go through without any knowledge of what's going on because that's how you learn the game the best. If you go through with a guide, you're not really learning the game yourself. You're learning it from someone else's perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand what you mean. Their techniques might be good. I still like having my own style, which is why I'm uh, I'm always a dodger. I've never been a parrier in any of the Dark Souls games. So Xalor said, yeah, then after you finish, we could help you with the trophies. Yeah, that's my main concern. Is there any missable trophies in this game? Or you play and there's a point of no return. I remember that. No, Bloodborne... But... Um... The only missable trophy is doing the secret secret ending. There's there's a secret secret ending. You have to but do you can back up your save, right? Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I, I read uh, pretty much I all mean, the roadmap. I like the game enough to play through it seven times now, so that wasn't really a problem for me, but you know, if you're a trophy hunter, I think you can back up your save and, and do it over and over again. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's just that when you're doing the special endings, you can't bring someone with you. You have to do them yourself. So that's where okay. that's where going through the game one time and learning the game yourself is really helpful. Uh, Xalor said it, but it's ba basically get all weapons and defeat all bosses. Yeah, there's things called chalice dungeons where there's like one or two weapons hidden in those and okay. also the secret bosses hidden in those as well. Uh, I, I've i gone through those challenge, chalice dungeons twice and I hate doing them. Especially if there's one that all your stats are halved, including your health and your stamina. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very tough one. But, you know, it's it's a great success when you get through it. And Amygdala can go fuck himself. Herself. Sorry. But the, <laughs> the clear rate of the Platinum is like 30% on PSM profile. So it might not be that hard, right? It's doable, but uh, you have to put in some work. And I, yeah, okay. uh, I think there's a lot of people out there who don't want to put in the work. So they just pass it. Or they played it once because it was free on PlayStation Plus And they were like... This game is hard, and they left. Yeah, yeah. I'm just <laughs> Coco. Uh, Coco did that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was there for it. All right. All right. Rip. All right. So, do you want to jump into the PlayStation memory segment of the show? I would love to jump into the memory segment. All right. So last week, uh, you 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 take you took uh, Africa on the PlayStation Three, which was a bad game, right? Well, not too bad, but. It wasn't horrible, but it was definitely one of those games that's like, why'd they make this? <laughs> and why yeah. is it PlayStation exclusive? Um, so this week I took uh, a PSP game which was remastered on the PlayStation 4. Uh, it's a trilogy. It's called Patapon. Uh, I took this one because I have it on my uh, personal collection, the first one. And I think you would love this game. Uh, you never heard about this one, right? No, but like I said, I, I did I did play the stage that's in PlayStation Battle Royale a lot. It, it looked like a fun little concept. So basically, um, it's like the best of both worlds. Uh, by the way, uh, Depray Slasher, welcome to the stream. Uh, YouTube didn't tell me you were live. I'm so mad. <laughs> yeah, that's YouTube. Well, YouTube might be a little fucked after the, the outage uh, last yeah. last night. Yeah, uh, yeah I... but Parapon is a... It's a... Like side scrolling but you don't control like your troops your characters you control them uh with a rhythm game basically so if you want to do an attack uh it's a different rhythm if you want to do like a special attack it's a different rhythm so you need to learn all the rhythms and um oh you're saying rhythms I yeah. thought you were saying I thought you were saying written like writing something down I was very confused for it no 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 that that's french for you that I get because I'm french I get you now Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's written? Rhythm. R uh, the the, the fucking us. H, man. The fucking yeah. H in English. <laughs> we are not used to that. They are muted, basically, in French. Oh, really? I have, yeah. I have difficulty with the A, the H, and um, the R. So th this is, like, my main difficulty in English, basically. Like, um, well, it's hey. not often that, like, written and written... <laughs> or something like that, right? But uh, yeah, that's French for you. That, that's because I'm French. But it doesn't matter, well, right? Now that I know it's a rhythm game, I, I'm actually way more interested now. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you need to learn the music. Um, you need to, to learn the patterns. 
And after, yeah, like there's uh, RPG elements in this too. Um, you can equip uh, different weapons to different characters. You control your troops. Uh, you you equip them with better equipment. You you grind a little bit to get better equipment. After that, you continue the story. You can replay all the the story mission. Uh, the first one is probably the best one. Uh, after that, they expand a little bit in different direction. I would say. But um, if you like what you're hearing, um, hearing, <laughs> yummy, um, the remaster is really cheap. Uh, it contains all the games, all the, 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 the original games. Oh, really? It's a, it's a really unique game um, and um, you won a lot of awards, um, best PSP game. Uh, it's really loved among uh, PlayStation community. So um, yeah, Palapon, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna write that down. Patapon. Stream yeah. it, I will help you. I'm pretty <laughs> sure you will love this man. You'll love this. I'm I pretty love sure. my rhythm games. Yeah. I, I, they're they're great. Rhythm game. Donkey Konga, that was my jam back in the day. With the Congo? The the bongos? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. with the bongos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know my games, man. Uh, Deepre said, uh, you silly French Canadian, I love you, Chrono. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play it now. Yeah, Palapon is uh, freaking awesome. And now that I'm talking about it, I think I'll buy the, um, the remaster. Oh, uh, talk it's... yourself into it. <laughs> yeah, probably. And uh, if there's a Vita version, uh, it will be perfect with the touchscreen too. It's I would the, think the type of game version. that is really cool with the touchscreen. Yeah. All right. So um, is that it? I i think so yeah all right so that's pretty much it my friends uh for the episode the episode 10 of chronocast i hope you enjoyed it thank you again game console for your question and really cool question really interesting conversation really liked it uh, don't forget that you can be a part of the show just like game consolers. Now that we're doing live streams still, uh, you might want to drop your question in the chat to answer them, basically. Not sure if we'll do uh, live streams each week, though. Uh, we need to talk about it. Uh, do you prefer live stream? You can talk about it right now, right? Um, it depends on uh, how your your viewership is. If, if people like the, the podcast better as a, um, a recorded, I would go with recorded and then do the live streams every now and then. But I, I thought this was great. I mean, in, interacting with people and answering their questions on the fly was pretty interesting. Yeah, I think so too. And the the, the thing with um, live stream is that you have a visual aids too. Um, you can see like the news while I'm talking about it. We're talking about it. So it might be a little bit better, I feel like. Or I may be recording like that in the next podcast. We, we need to talk about it, actually. Um, maybe do a special episode every 10 episode. Yeah. That yeah. was the original plan, actually. <laughs> and like, like I said, I, I don't know if you saw, I responded to someone on Reddit. And they were yeah. saying, like, oh, it's on YouTube. It's not a podcast. It's like, well, it, it's, it's a podcast. It can be on yeah. YouTube. It can be on Twitch. It can be on Twitter. You know, a podcast is a podcast. It doesn't matter what platform it's on. Now, you know, if, if you prefer podcasts that are on Spotify or SoundCloud, you know, of course, there's going to be different things for everyone. But every, I mean, I listen to the, the podcasts on YouTube and everywhere. I, 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 I'm a multi-platform podcast listener. Um, so I, I think uh, this is a great idea. Yep, I think so too. And I think it's really unique to do the podcast live too. I think it's different. Yeah, not too many people do them live in our community. So I, I, I think that's a great idea. And also it's uh, l listenable, right? Um, like the archive version will be perfect if you want like to download the MP3 and listen to it in your car. Mm -hmm. So um, it's like a double dip. Like you do the live stream and you post it like the next day on YouTube. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you still have the podcast and you still have like, if people like the live stream, you can join the live stream. If you prefer the archive version, you just listen to the archive version. So yeah, we'll talk about it. We'll figure it out. So if you yeah. have questions, <laughs> if you have questions, uh, guys, um, just Post them on Discord, on Twitter, on Facebook. Uh, we are everywhere. Me or Yemi, doesn't matter. And once again, thank you so much for all the feedback, the love, and the support the podcast gets. Uh, thank you so much for all the, the live chat too. Really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you in the next one. I'll see you later, guys. And see you, see chat. Ya. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Yemi. Uh, where where can uh, people reach you, Yemi? By the way, oh, before can, ending the stream, you can, you can you can you can reach me on YouTube, on Twitter at Yemi the Ferret, and SoundCloud. Just go to Twitter, and it's in the uh, bio section. Or you can post them on the live stream too next time if you want. Yeah, um, but but everybody in the live and in the chat right now knows you, so it yeah. doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, are you going to make up? Uh, stream for youtube's messed up last night chrono yeah i'm planning on uh, playing crash bandicoot 3 maybe like friday or saturday or sunday i was mad last night but i'll <laughs> see you in the next one guys see you later